Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order of the Board of Commissioners. Let the record show that um, I am in chambers and Commissioner Christopher and Commissioner Anderson are participating via Zoom from two different locations. Um, I would also note for the record that uh, the chair and vice chair have designated myself to be the acting chair for today's meeting since I'm the one that's in the chambers. It's just a little logistically a little easier uh, to have the person that's here. And so with that, I will have a start. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. If I have everybody stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I don't believe we have any meeting minutes for today that will bring us, but I would be looking for a uh, motion for approval of the business agenda. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the business agenda as presented. Okay. I'm not sure if we still have. To okay, I'm gonna step down and second that motion. Um, we have a motion and a second on the business agenda. Any further discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. That brings us to citizen comment. Uh, I would ask folks uh, to limit their comments to three minutes. Um, we will start in the room first, if there's anyone that wishes to provide public comment at this time. No, not seeing any. I'll go online. If there's anybody online that wishes to provide public comment, pre please uh, raise your hand, unmute yourself, turn your camera on, um, star six if you're on a phone. Not seeing anybody at this time. Oh, there we go. Lynn Mason, go ahead. Um, good afternoon. Thank you, commissioners. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about um, the potential animal shelter. Um, I was listening to um, KLCK radio on Wednesday and heard the sheriff talking about it and, and heard some disturbing comments about euthanizing pets. So I just wanted to um, talk about that. Um, you know, after sitting on this $670,000 grant for almost a year, the sheriff has finally started to work on this project. And um, apparently there seems to be a confusion between what is a dog pound and what is a dog shelter. Um, the grant that he applied for and got was for a dog shelter. And um, that is very different than a dog pound. A dog pound is more like a jail for pets where they are held as a stray hold for three days and then they're put to death, um, usually by the animal control um, deputies. A shelter is like a foster home for pets where pets uh, are lost and they're, they go there to be reunited with their families, hopefully, or put up for adoption. And it usually requires um, volunteers to be able to do that. Um, their medical needs are taken care of. And, you know, it's a humane environment where, where pets are, you know, tried to give the, the best amount of treatment and opportunity for rehoming as possible. Um, the the other thing I want to talk about this, and I know there's been a lot of kind of back and forth between the commissioners and the sheriff who, you know, who applied for this grant. Is this about the county or not? I mean, the, the reality is that the county needs this service. We, we desperately need it. The sheriff's department, it's the third top calls that they get is for animal related issues. So there's clearly a need for that. And uh, we'd all like to see it happen. Um, what I'm confused about is the, the capital budget grant, when you apply for one, which I've applied for before, they're very specific and they make you go into great detail about where you're going to be, um, 
work, putting the project that you're applying for money on, uh, do you have approval to use that space or that land or that building or whatever? So I'm kind of confused about the finger pointing back and forth because in that grant application should have been all those specifics taken care of and approval um, happened before that was accepted. So I'm kind of confused about that. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I just want to make sure that the understanding is that, that we're not going to have a dog pound because that is literally uh, an archaic um, way to, to take care of animals these days. That's not how things are run anymore. People run animal shelters and there's a distinction between that. And I would really like to make sure that that's the kind of facility that is created for um, our county and to sure that, ensure that people um, pets are taken care of uh, and hopefully reunited with their owners and um, and it's done in a humane manner. Okay. So that is my comment today. Thanks for your time. Okay, thank you, Ms. Mason. Your, your time has elapsed. Um, I will go back into the room. Uh, we are in citizen comment right now. If there's anyone in the room that wishes to provide um, citizen comment, this is an opportunity. Come forward, state your name for the record, if you would, please, Ms. Sunday. My name is Sunday Sutton. I am the coalition coordinator for the Coalition Preventing Abuse in Klickitat County. Um, we recently sent out invitations for our key leader event, which is happening on Friday, uh, December 9th at 9 a.m. It can be attended virtually or in person downstairs in the Mount Adams room at 9 a.m. And I'm just here to show my respect and give a personal invite to the county commissioners. I have brought a flyer uh, in case the invite did not get to you. And um, I'm hoping that we see some presence because as you know, it takes a community and uh, we appreciate all the voices in the community, but also need all the voices in the community to do the work we do. So I hope to see you there. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sutton. Yeah, I of course, you can give it to the clerk or. Okay. Thank you for the mm -hmm. I will go back online. Uh, if there's anyone that wishes to provide public comment. Looks like 7211 is unmuted. Would you wish to provide public Greg comment? Greg Wagner, Greg Wagner with C. On go November ahead. 22nd, the code compliance officer updated you on several code complaints. He asked for guidance from you on how to proceed with those cases. You talked back and forth, were confused, made assumptions, and never gave him advice he needed. Concerning the junk vehicles, Mr. Christopher stated that man needed a CUP for his business. Does that mean that Jake needs a CUP for his unpermitted short-term rental business? How can Jake, the commissioner, make decisions on code violation when he violates the code? He should recuse himself from any code discussions and decisions. When will his two code complaints be investigated? If and when that happens, you, Mr. Souter and Mr. Christopher, should recuse yourself from any decision as you are unable to render a fair and impartial decision. When will Jake be forced to comply with the county codes as you are forcing these citizens? After listening to 55 minutes of your disjointed discussion, it's obvious you lack the needed knowledge to do your job as the code compliance officer's boss. Mr. Souter has 16 years of experience and should know how to advise the code compliance officer with the proper process. There is a process in place which has been used for past code complaints by a trained code compliance officer while under the supervision of the building department. It worked. Why aren't you using it now? You say trust the process. In order to trust the process, you must first know it. You don't. You apparently never have read the county code title 24, or you would know about how to handle code complaints. It is obvious as the code compliance officer's boss, you do not know what you're doing and should not be his boss. County code clearly states the sheriff's department shall be the primary enforcement officials 
far the county code. Why are you violating the county code? Our county commissioners lack the leadership it needs. Once again, you have failed the citizens. Thank you, Mr. Christopher, for, for bringing that to our attention. I'm assuming that concludes your comments, Mr. Wagner. Okay, back in the room, is there anyone that wishes to provide public comment? Not seeing anybody, I'll go back online. 3245. 3245 is unmuted. Do you wish to provide public comment? I do, Ken McCune, Goldendale, Washington. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Mason, I believe her name was, for such an eloquent uh, uh, defense of uh, the pet population. Uh, but Sheriff Songer shouldn't take any heat for his comments. I'm the one who mentioned the euthanasia. And the reason I mentioned it was I was curious just how long do you hang, uh, hang on to a stray uh, animal before nobody, if nobody comes and claims it or nobody wants it, what do you do with it? So... Sheriff Songer shouldn't take any heat for that comment. And we need people like Lynn to stand up and, and give her, her, her advice and her guidance on this issue because we have a chance to do it. We need to do it uh, and give people a chance to get these pets if they want them. If not, what's the alternative? How long do you keep them alive and feed them and clean up after them? Anyway, that's all I had on my mind. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. McCune. Okay, we are still in public comment. Is there anyone online that wishes to... Oh, Gabrielle Gilbert, go ahead. Hi, thank you for your time. So I wanted to clarify what was spoken last week uh, in public comments. Um, I believe... Um, Commissioner Christopher said there were some 40 children identified um, from the county workforce requiring uh, child care, and I just want to get clarification on that. I also um, will make a quick clap back on the comment that came in against this advocacy for child care. This individual can easily look up online. Uh, the recent, in the last three years, articles concerning the child care desert um, that exists here in Klickitat County, as well as Gorge Wide. And um, my North Star is clear about my advocacy for child care in this county. I work this every day and have for the last decades. And I am absolutely and clear on what success looks like, and that's affordable, accessible, available child care throughout the county. I look towards a child care infrastructure bill so we can at least have something on the legislature statewide that addresses the rural um, uh, situation of lack of child care. And we actually sit in a child care desert. And that is pretty clear based on numbers that people can research and find um, from nonprofits and even the state numbers. So. My North Star is clear, and I'm not going to cede any field, uh, give up any conversations I have with commissioners going forward, uh, or um, drop my advocacy until I actually see child care open up in Klickitat County. And I'm happy to clap back of anyone who attempts to stand in that way. I also want to be clear that infrastructure uh, for childcare is an economic builder. It allows individuals to return to the workforce. It allows for individuals to stay in the workforce. And these are economic drivers in taxable income and in uh, uh, disposable income that f um, fuels the economy in, uh, in Klickitat County. And that's why it's important as, as you discuss budgets and how money is addressed I also want to speak to the youth center's budget. 
if a 3% across the board cut was done on budget, that would have represented $600 removed from the youth center's budget. The fact that they lost $4,000 needs to be addressed and you need to place their budget back to its original 20,000 or more because of what they do for the community and because of their need and how important and integral they are in the county. And I also want to say that you can find those dollars if you stop jailing 84-year-old men with Alzheimer's or dementia. And I think that you have to really address how we as a county can be comfortable that dollars are placed where somebody with dementia is placed in jail. And you need to address that on a policy. And you need to address that you remove dementia patients from the legal um, process and get them the help that they require because of their diminished capacity. And that it really is um, about who we are as a county um, when you address um, individuals in this community with Alzheimer's and that really should be addressed. I thank you for your time. I look forward to the next conversations about childcare and I look forward to you answering these commentaries that I brought and tip of the hat to Lynn Mason. Excellent, excellent commentary. And you really should get your ducks in a row concerning um, pets and animals in the county and doing it in um, a humane way. Because if you're a dog owner or a cat owner or a pet owner, you love them like family and you, uh, you don't give up on them at any given time. So um, thank you so much for your your time. Thank you, Ms. Gilbert. Okay, I'm going to come back in the room. We are still in citizen comment. Not seeing anybody. Okay, back online. Is there someone, anyone that wishes to provide public comment? Raise, uh, Sherry, your hand is raised. Please identify yourself for the record, if you would, please. Hi, this is Sherry. Um, yeah, I wanted to continue the conversation reg regarding code compliance in our county and who's the one and who, who's in charge of code compliance right now. I, I see that that's the commissioners. And as Greg stated earlier in the Tech County Code, it does have the sheriff being, um, I, I mean, I, I would like to know, do you commissioners even know what county code we're talking about when it talks about the sheriff and code compliance? And if not, I'd be happy to give you that exact county code. But also, you know, there has been two code compliance complaints and my complaint has been completely ignored. I had one comment back from the code compliance officer who told me he put my code complaint in with another code complaint that was of the same nature. I don't believe that that's legal. It's two separate code complaints and should be treated as such. And I'm talking about Commissioner Anderson's short-term rental that does not have a conditional use permit. I've provided the evidence to the code compliance officer. And in the county zone, zoning ordinance, number 62678, section 3, 10 to 11, neither the principal unit, this is a short-term rental. This is how it explains. Neither the principal unit, meaning your primary resident, nor the ADU shall be used as a short-term rental. A short-term rental vacation, a short-term vacation rental, which is less than 60 consecutive days in a single 12-month period. So that's pretty clear. So if you're doing an A, B, and B, or Airbnb, and according to your own Klickitat County planning director, when I asked what I would need to do to rent out my primary residence as an Airbnb, she wrote me back in an email stating, the zoning ordinance addresses land uses in Klickitat County. Since short-term rentals is neither a permitted nor a prohibited use, it will require a conditional use permit per your county planning director. I require, and other people require, a conditional use permit in order to operate a short-term rental in Klickitat County. People who are doing that without a conditional use permit are an obvious violation of code permit or code violations. And I am asking for a reply, when will the co-compliance officer address one of our leaders blatantly, knowingly, 
knowing these uh, code complaints are in place? And how did we find out about his Airbnb? It's through the fact that there was an illegal underage drinking party at that residence and he claims he rents it as an Airbnb. He admits it. He says, yes, I do have an Airbnb. I use that to supplement my high county commissioner wages. I do that out of my primary residence. It's on record. It's not an ADU and I do that when I'm not needing the house for myself. So I'm asking you, Commissioner Sauter or Christopher, to answer when my code complaint will be addressed. Because I'm pretty positive if it was me violating the code, it would be addressed. So I don't know if this is uh, favoritism. Ms. Busquet. But it needs to be addressed. Thank Your you. Your time has elapsed. Thank you, Ms. Busquet. Okay, I'm going to come back in the room. Is there anyone that wishes to provide public comment? Not seeing any, I will go online if there is anyone, please unmute yourself, raise your hand virtually or turn your camera on, raise your hand actually so we can see it. Star six if you're on a phone, if you're muted. I am not, I'm not seeing anyone. Okay. Back in the room, surely nobody wants to provide public comment today. Okay, no, <laughs> I'm not soliciting public comment. It's just, this is the opportunity. Okay, I will turn to my seatmates if he, um, either of them uh, wants to respond to any of those. I see Commissioner Christopher has um, turned his camera on. Did you wish to respond, Commissioner Christopher? Uh, my only response is to, I guess, state my opinion of, of citizen comment. Um, that citizen comment is supposed to be meant for citizens to comment and address the Board of Commissioners and not for dialogue or debate. Uh, and to let anybody that commented know that if they actually would like to have a conversation uh, about an issue that they can uh, contact me either by email or phone or, or schedule a meeting in my office at any time. Um, and that going into the new year, it will be my recommendation uh, that the new board does not um, partake in dialogue back and forth. Uh, and we use the time to hear the customers or the, the citizens concerned while maintaining order. Um, so if anybody that has questions wants to contact me, feel free to do so. Uh, but that is my comment. Okay, thank you, Mr. Christopher. And I don't see if we have Commissioner Anderson or not. I don't believe so. Okay, um, I'll I will respond to a couple of uh, things. Uh, first, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna take them out of order because it's just fresh in my mind. Um, I, I do believe, um, oh, wait a minute, I will actually stop because we are still in citizen comment time. I do see a hand raised from Mr. Briggs. So if you wish to provide public Hello. comment, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry, are you taking comment on the uh, the county budget at this time? Uh, no, not yet. That's That okay. doesn't until 1.30. This is just general citizen comment on- Okay, the sorry, meeting. I looked at the agenda and wasn't totally clear, but thank you, I'll okay. wait. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, to Miss Gilbert. So Gabrielle, um, I did see, um, I was actually reading in our uh, national, the NACO County newspaper that we get weekly, and they had run a front page story on uh, county ramps up daycare. It was in North Dakota. <clears throat> and it is kind of an interesting model. The, the um, article doesn't have a whole lot of really specific details, other than it is, was, it is a public private partnership between the county, the cities, um, and private industry that they have set up this daycare. They actually formed a nonprofit that manages it. Um, I am going to actually reach out because it's a rural county in North Dakota, and so it does uh, <clears throat> have some similarities to us here in Klickitat County. And I'm just kind of curious the details of what they did and how it worked, um, but it's being shown as a, as a um, 
as a real positive way of doing it in a rural community. So I'm just kind of curious about, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel here in Click Attack County. If somebody else has already figured out how to do that, I'm, I'm interested in it. And so I will reach out to the committee, because the commission uh, was involved and also their economic development department in this, uh, it's McKinsey County in North Dakota. <clears throat> so I'm gonna reach out to them while I'm still in a capacity where they'll return my phone call and see what I what information I can get on that. And I will forward that, and I can also forward you this article as well if you uh, would like to see it, Ms. Gilbert. Thank you so much. I would love to see that article, and thank you for your leadership. Um, to Ms. Mason, um, as far as what the dog shelter, I think the, and you know, I was obviously here, you are correct that typically when someone applies for a, a capital budget request, there is a, you know, you fill out the questionnaire, as you said, you've done it. We've done it, meaning we, the Board of Commissioners on specific projects that we were in charge of. I don't have any recollection of this, that like the dog shelter dollars were, Kind of dropped out of the air on us so i don't know as far as you are correct i would be curious to see i don't recall ever seeing that that would have the details as to what were we thinking where would it go who would staff it all of that should have been included in that in that um, request and i would assume that they were um or these this may have been um a little more informal request is what I'm I'm kind of curious about. And so that's why this isn't pointing fingers back and forth. We just honestly, I don't have any information otherwise. I Again, when we heard about it, we heard about it when it, there was kind of a press release on it. And so at least that's my recollection. I heard about it as a commissioner. I wasn't involved in the uh, in the application process, but there should be an application somewhere that has those details uh, if that if that capital budget request went through this, the standard formal process that we all use, you are correct. Um, to Ms. Sutton, I did get your request. I was kind of curious, am I considered, will I still be a key leader that I, you would even want me there? I have gone in the, in the past, that is an excellent um, event that I have participated in before, but it also with, you know, there's, there's not a lot of daylight between me and the end of the month or end of the term, end of the career. All right. Okay, well, I will, I will definitely participate. Let's see, Friday starts at nine o'clock. Yeah, should be fine. I, I may have to be virtual at least for the first part. So, all right, thank you. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it there. So we've got about three minutes left before we start the um, next items on our agenda. So I'm gonna look through the stack of stuff that I have here. We can we can do it now since we have a couple minutes. Yep, I'm looking at you. So you can go back. You got I'm, you have more pressing. Thank you, Mr. Chair, commissioners, um, the uh, auditor elect Joby has requested um, permission from the commissioners for us to post the chief deputy position. I have confirmed that with uh, Auditor Sorensen. That she's okay with that to give the new auditor kind of a jump on mm. um, getting a pool of applicants for that position so it would be at the uh, step one through five at the current grade 72 um, if you so allow 
Okay. Mr. Christopher, you got any issue with that? We're seeing a thumbs up. Commissioner Christopher, yes. Thank you, commissioners. That's good. So you'll definitely need a chief auditor, chief deputy auditor. Okay, the time being 1.30, time we've set aside for public hearings, public meetings, and bid openings. We will start with our first order of business is a bid opening for the Klickitat County Sadist Pass radio tower. The work to be performed under these specifications consists of furnishing all labor um, tools, materials, and equipment necessary for construction of the Sadist Pass, Pass radio tower. Specific work includes, but are not limited to the design and construction of the concrete foundation, lattice tower, conduit bridge, antenna installation, and cabling from tower to the shelter, all in accordance with the contract provisions and the standard specifications. So we will do, I will be the bid opener. Oh, we got one. Well, that's, I guess, better than none. Okay, for my seatmates, it appears we have one, uh, one bidder. And it's, oh, I didn't look. I believe it's, is it day wireless? Yeah, it's day wireless. Okay. Okay. Bid bond is present. I assume no addendums, no anything. Okay. Uh, total bid five hundred and thirty three thousand seventy dollars and seventy eight cents. That's five three three comma zero seven zero point seven eight. Sorry. There we go. Yes, it was something like that. <clears throat> Okay, and for the record, the engineer's estimate was $424,948.58. Okay, I would entertain a motion at this time. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we uh, pass off this bid to Public Works for review and recommendation. Okay, I will step down and second that motion. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Here you go. Our next order is a request for proposal opening, so an RFP for the electronic filing solutions for Clickadat County Superior Court Clerk's Office with a system to submit documents electronically to the clerk's office and scheduling an opening. Isn't this the opening? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, one. just one also. That seems to be the, um, the order of the day. Although it does say it right on here, extremely urgent. And it is. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, first, the, our one bid is from Image Soft, um, Royal Oak, uh, Michigan. As this is RFP, it's not a bid, it is uh, a proposal. Um, so I would look for a motion to 
uh, I guess, return this to the clerk's office for review. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, uh, make a motion that we return it to the clerk's office for review and for her recommendation. Thank you. I'll step down and second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, next up is a public meeting to consider approval of short plat SPL 2022-14 um, in the Trout Lake vicinity. The applicants are Sh Charlene Gilpatrick. We'll start with the staff review. All right, so I have a final approval for short plat SPL 202214 is a proposal to create two lots from parcel number 0610225500800. The proposed short plat is located within the portion of section 22, Township 6, range 10 in the Trout Lake vicinity, Quicktack County. The administrative review of the short plat has been completed. Signatures have been obtained from the road health planning departments, including treasurer's office. All conditions attached to the preliminary approval have been met. If the board finds that this is in the public's interest to approve the short plat. A motion needs to be made granting the final approval of short plat SPL 202214. Okay, thank you. Any questions from my seatmates? No, not pretty straightforward. Um, I would entertain a motion then. Mr. Chairman, I would uh, move that we approve uh, SPL 2022-14. Okay, I will step down and second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Before we move on to the for the uh, supplemental budget hearing, if you'll just give us a minute to get this signed and ready, although you can get set up if you wish. Pardon. Okay. Okay, I will now open the public hearing on the 2022 dash. This is our number four emergency budget supplemental adjustment. Uh, this public hearing will proceed in an orderly fashion, and I would like to ask your cooperation in the following procedure. Everyone present will be given an opportunity to be heard. Uh, the public hearing is being recorded. Therefore, when you address the board, please begin by stating your name and address. Speak slowly and clearly. Only one person will be allowed to speak at a time. Uh, the concern is that this hearing is to be fair in form and substance as well as appearance. And we will begin um, before we hear from the audience, we will request the staff to provide background information um, on this. Um, this is the four supplemental. This um, supplemental encompasses um, general funds, senior services, victim witness, auditors own him, and landfill gas. Um, the majority are salary and benefit related expenses um, resulting from the cost of living adjustment um, or reclassifications of positions or benefit changes. Um, there's a um, software contract within there, and then the PUD has a request for the Glenwood water system. Right. Two of these um, require budget intervention, and five of them are budget neutral. Thank 
Thank you. Does that conclude your staff report? Okay, thank you. Okay, at this time, uh, uh, the floor will be open for comments from the audience. Uh, in fairness to all attendance, in attendance, each person will be given an opportunity to address the board for an initial period not to exceed three minutes. If anyone requires special accommodation in order to speak, please let me know and we will make arrangements as needed. Please avoid demonstrations such as clapping or cheering um, either during or after the conclusions of anyone's presentation. Remember, this is a time for taking a public testimony. No debate is allowed. Please also remember that it is the county's intention to hold an orderly public hearing uh, to give every person an opportunity to speak and to be heard and to ensure that no individual is embarrassed by their exercise of their right of free speech. So I will now open the public com uh, this uh, for public testimony on the supplemental budget. And I just want to clarify this is on the supplemental we will have uh, the next one will be for the 2023 so next year's budget. This is just the final amendment to this year's budget. Anyone that wishes to provide public comment public testimony, I should say i'm going to look in the room first i'm not seeing anybody i'm going to look online if there's anyone, please uh, unmute yourself or raise your hand. I am not seeing anybody. Okay. Uh, do my seatmates have any questions, comments, or clarifications from staff? No, sir. Okay. I have none. Pretty self explanatory. We've been over this a few times. Yeah. So that's good. Okay. Is there anyone else? Um, that this is like your last chance for public testimony on the supplemental. Okay, I'm not seeing any. I will thereby I will close the public hearing to further public testimony. Uh, discussion by the board. None, sir. Okay, I have none also. So I would be looking for a motion to adopt. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adopt the supplemental budget and amendments for various funds and departments for the 2022 budget expenditures in the sum of $384,900. Okay, I will step down and second that motion. We have a motion and a second um, approving the fourth supplemental uh, to the 2022 budget in the amount of $384,900. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. Uh, next will be the um, public hearing for the consideration uh, and adoption of the Clickitat County Capital Improvement Plan. This is for the 2023 to 2028 um, time. And we will start with a Okay, this is our second time with the 2023 capital improvement plan and budget. Um, the budget was published back in September um, for an October 4th hearing that was continued to the 11th um, for written comments. On the 11th, it was then canceled. It was published again um, on the county website um, as well as in the offices for a hearing um, today. And I would like to recommend that we go ahead and continue this hearing to the 13th, leaving it open for written comment. Okay, thank you. I will now open the public hearing uh, to provide public testimony um, regarding the capital improvement plan. Is there anybody wishing to provide public testimony on the capital? Approval plan in the room. Not seeing anybody. Anybody online? Please raise your hand, unmute yourself, star six. I'll take my glasses off so I can actually see. This is a tough crowd today. Come on. Lighten up a little bit. Oh, that's true. We did set the very that's that's good. Sorry. I'm I'll gavel myself down. I'm not seeing 
<laughs> okay, I'm not seeing any um, discussion by the board or questions. None, sir. Okay. Yeah, and I, I'm, I would, I would concur. I would support um, holding this over as far as for adoption until next week. Um, so I guess I would need a motion to that effect, leaving the uh, public comment period open until next Tuesday. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I move that we hold over this uh, public hearing and continue it to December 13th, leaving open, uh, leaving it open to public comment. Okay, I'll step down and second the motion on that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Say aye. 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 Motion passed. You ordered me, so. I, no, no, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I can't listen to something and speak at the same time, so sorry. Okay. Motion still passed, so. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for their uh, work and their changes and addressing my concerns with that. Okay, that brings us to our uh, final public hearing. Well, no, actually, it's not of the day of this group. Uh, this would be a public hearing to consider adoption of the 2023 Click Attack County budget. Um, so I will now advise that the hearing is open for that purpose. And we will begin with fiscal manager um, Jen Bartley will provide a brief overview. I don't know how brief it can be with a gigantic budget. But. Well, it could be brief. It's um, basically, it was published the same time um, with the same hearings as the CIP. We made some revisions, um, adding in the behavioral health department right. um, and some other workarounds within there to get coming out of those workshops that we had um, gone back to with the total expense amount being $59,484,698. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I will now open um, the public hearing for the purposes of taking public testimony on adoption of the, of the proposed 2023 uh, county budget. Is there anybody, I'm gonna begin in the room First, is there anybody in the room that wishes to provide public testimony? I'd say somebody's in the waiting room and they may want to go Okay. Yeah. We will let them in. We will make sure we let them in before we close out. That concludes your public testimony? Sorry, yes, that's all I was pointing out. Okay. I'm going to go online and see is there uh, anyone that wishes to provide public testimony? Okay. Mr. Briggs, go ahead. You've raised your hand. Yeah, thank you. Um, good afternoon. Um, my name's Benjamin Briggs and I'm president of the White Salmon Valley Pool Metropolitan Park District Commission. Um, our commission has been working diligently over the past four years to organize the newly formed district and move forward with the sole mandate, which is to build, operate and maintain a community pool in the White Salmon Valley. Uh, the district's excited to report that for the first time in the 15 plus year effort to replace the White Salmon City Pool, we have a shovel ready project. Um, a site's been secured just off Loop Road near Columbia High School. This past spring, we completed the final design work <clears throat> for a pool facility that includes an eight lane, 25 yard outdoor pool with a deep end for a diving board and a 37 square, th sorry, sorry, 3,700 square foot bathhouse. Uh, construction documents have been prepared and the district is ready uh, to submit for county and state permits. We are prepared to move on with the construction phase of this project as soon as the necessary funds have been raised. The park district, like others looking to build, is facing a huge increase in construction costs over the last couple of years. The latest estimates received this fall are almost 30% higher than the estimates from the previous year. Uh, the current cost of this project is estimated just under $7 million. Uh, the park district has secured almost $2 million to date from levy funds and funds pledged or donated to the pool project. We've submitted an application to the Washington State Treasurer's local bond program and expect to be able to service a bond of around a million dollars through that program. Um, to fill the remaining funding gap, we plan to target funding from the cities of White Salmon and Bingen, uh, Klickitat County, 
state of Washington, as well as uh, RCO and other grant opportunities. We'll also be pursuing funding from private sources. The park district has targeted the summer of 2025 to begin construction and have swimmers in the water in the summer of 2026. Since the closure of the White Salmon City Pool four years ago, close to 30,000 local pool visits have been missed. That includes over 1,600 local swim lessons. The parents that do not have the time and resources to take their kids to Hood River or the Dalles are finding no available space in swim lesson programs at those facilities. Water safety is an essential skill in an area of cold, swift moving and dangerous waters. Users of the new pool will include county residents from Trout Lake to Lyle and all points in between. They will be of all ages and all income levels. The Klickitat County Commission has an opportunity to contribute to this vital and highly visible community project. Please consider funding our project or consider funding for our project in the 2023 budget. And also as you strategize into 24 and 25, uh, we hope to return early next year to give a, the commission a more comprehensive update and answer any questions you may have. Um, I appreciate your time and allowing us to share this comment. Thank you, Mr. Briggs. Okay. We are still open for public testimony on the proposed 2023 uh, county budget. Um, I do see, oh, uh, Kirby Early, your hand is raised. Do you wish to provide public testimony? Oh, just a minute, you're muted. How's that? Ah, good. Perfect, okay. Um, uh, I'm Kirby Erdaly and I'm a resident and business owner here in White Salmon. Um, I appreciate you guys and all the work that you do and being here on this beautiful sunny day indoors and listening to you, listening to us. Um, I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, it's been too long since White Salmon's had a swimming pool, despite the valiant efforts of a group of uh, very highly committed residents. Um, a community pool is a place for kids and families of all walks to gather. Um, they can gather together and they can share in the joys of summer, in addition to learn the lifelong, very important skill of swimming. Um, I would really like to see Klickitat County support that effort in the 2023 budget. Um, with the county support, the Park District will be able to more successfully pursue other sources of funding, such as state and federal sources of money. Um, and those entities like to see county support before they give money, is my understanding. So that's it. I just really would love to see you guys consider the pool here in 2023. It's been too long since we've had a pool in White Salmon. And as Ben said, there's a lot of kids that either aren't learning to swim, don't have something fun to do in the summertime, or are spending a lot of time in Hood River. It'd be nice to keep those kids here in town um, and have a good, safe summertime activity. So thank you. I appreciate it. And you guys have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Daly. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Erdaly. I'm sorry I butchered your name at first. That's okay. It's very common. Okay, thank you. Okay, we are still taking public testimony on the proposed uh, 2023 county budget. Is there anyone? I'm going to go back in the room. Can't get many takers in the room today. Okay, back online. Is there anyone else that wishes to provide? Uh, Gabrielle Gilbert, go ahead. Your hand is raised. Thank you. So I absolutely fully support the last comments concerning the um, pool and getting that actually uh, built for the community and that it is an important aspect on um, services that are available for children to participate in. You gain far more of um, a safe place for children to gather and to learn important skills. When the white salmon pool was up and running, my children learned how to swim in it. Many families from Hood River actually came to white salmon when we had our pool to learn how to swim because the lessons were excellent and actual swim time was notable when they were learning that um, life-saving skill. And that over the course of years, a lot of um, potential um, 
possibilities for students and for young people to actually have services in the city and in the and the county have been dwindling and nothing gets replaced and so the pool is an important part of um a healthy um society and and we've needed it for a long time the other thing i want to speak on the budget is that you need to increase your dollars in the budget for entities that service children and service the juveniles and service the community members that are younger than 18. And the fact that those budgets get hit hardest is problematic and needs a redress. So I hope that full funding returns for the youth center and for all the organizations that work within the county that work with young people. They tend to get the biggest cuts when there is a financial fiscal um, address and I feel that that is misguided and you need to return at least get that youth center dollars back on um full 20 twenty thousand or more and 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 to when you address budgets to stop slashing budgets that address young people so I appreciate your time and thank you so much okay thank you Mr. Gil Miss Gilbert okay. We are um, still taking public testimony uh, online at this time. Is there anyone else that wishes to provide public testimony on the proposed 2023 uh, Clickitat County budget? Raise your hand. Unmute yourself. Oh, I see 7211. You are unmuted. Did you just to provide public testimony? Yes, I do. My name is Greg Wagner. I'm with Steve. I'd like for you to set aside $1 million to open up the energy overlay zone and write and enact and install solar ordinances into the energy overlay zone to protect the Klickitat County and its citizens. You, Mr. Souter, told us it would cost a million dollars. So I see no problem in setting aside a million dollars to do something good for the citizens of the county, and that is to protect them from the encroaching, invading, and hazardous solar farms that are intended for our county. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. Okay. We are still in public. Oh, okay. Uh, Lynn Mason, your hand is raised. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I would, since I'm here, I'd also like to comment on the, the pool and um, budgeting money towards the white salmon pool. Um, I was, and my family were lucky enough to enjoy the exist, the old pool when it was running. And it literally was such uh, a special place and gem in our community. I remember many uh, hot summer days in that pool with my young son at that time, looking around thinking we are so lucky to have this, um, incredible um, facility. And then as my son got older to be able to walk there with his friends as a preteen and go enjoy the pool. Um, I feel for these families that can't experience that now. And it is really necessary for our children to have these places to go, um, to, to be active, to be safe, to um, be leading healthy lifestyles and making healthy choices. And that's uh, invaluable in our community. Um, we're also lacking a, a basketball court for our, our kids as well. So these things that used to be here have, are not here anymore uh, for, for various reasons and we absolutely need them. This is investing in our, our kids, our future and giving them um, healthy choices, uh, healthy outlets uh, that they can enjoy with their family and friends. So I absolutely support um, budgeting towards a, a pool in white salmon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Mason. Okay, I'm still accepting public testimony. I see, oh, Sherry uh, Bosque, your hand is raised. Good afternoon again, commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in the public comments for the budget. 
One thing that um, I see a consistent theme with in the county's budget is the cost of living increases, the wage increases, the benefit increases due to inflation. And sometimes they like to throw in COVID-19. And, you know, we're all suffering from inflation out here. And when a county runs on taxpayer dollars, that's what I believe I've heard the county say, we operate on taxpayer dollars. You have to get our taxpayers dollars for your budget. Well, I, I believe there's other taxes and in revenue that comes into our county. And one of those are renewable energy in their taxes, windmills and the incoming solar. And what I don't see on our budget is how our county is looking to maximize its revenue from these large corporations that have come to our county who make billions of dollars and how our county taxes these renewable energies to get the most revenue for our, for our county. In 2013, when the assessor changed it from the income method to the cost, it shifted the burden to the people. So really, I have twofold here. You know, I understand y'all are worried about your incomes, your benefits, because inflation. Well, so, so are the people who pay the taxes to our county. We are also being hit by this inflation, gas prices, food prices. We have our families to feed. So as you're doing your budget, I, I would ask that you, you know, be a little bit cautious to how much you think people need to have more money, because I guarantee most of us out here aren't getting more money from our employers and maybe look at what's really important and how you can get more revenue to our county. And my suggestion again, and I know you pass it to the assessor, but you are in charge of the budget as we see right now. And you should be wanting our county to get the most revenue as possible. So you don't have to take it from the people and maybe you can make a couple million dollars, maybe seven and give White Salmon a pool, maybe give Goldendale a pool, I don't know. But let's get some revenue coming in the right way, not off the backs of the people. And when you look to give yourself more wage increases, cost of living, you say, well, we have the same cost of living out here in the general public. You know, think about how the money can be best spent. And I, I do think that doing things for the, the pool and for children and youth is important. It helps them become part of their community and I believe want to be more involved. So I would agree with if, I don't understand why the pool was taken out. I wasn't here, but if, if people want a pool, I think that should be above, you know, wage increases again. So, oh, and please look into the cost method for the renewable energies, especially as solar comes in and get more revenue for our county. So you don't have to hit our property taxes so hard. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Buske. Oh, perfect. Okay, <clears throat> still accepting public testimony on the proposed 2023 uh, county budget. I'm gonna come back in the room, see if anybody changed their mind. No. Okay, back online. If there's anybody, please unmute yourself, raise your hand, star six if you're uh, on a phone. Not seeing anyone. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna move us now to, uh, the board can request clarification of, of uh, public statements, ask questions of staff, et cetera. Ms. Jen. Um, I, if I may, I'd like to clarify a couple of things. I've heard a couple of things twice today. Um, so on youth, um, the youth budget, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know exactly what line item that's called, but Gabrielle has brought that up a couple of times. Um, so the reason that it was reduced as from the budget as much as it was is because the directive was to reduce um, 3% of the 2020 actuals. So the program didn't spend the money, it wasn't spending the money. So there was a 3% reduction of the actuals. Um, and that was for the 2022 budget and that budget was just carried forward into the 2023 um and then according uh, the colas so the the board has approved a four percent um cost of living adjustment um the state of washington um 
did an eight and a half percent wage increase to minimum wage, and Social Security has um, implemented an eight point seven percent increase um, for the twenty twenty three but their twenty twenty three years. So I just wanted to toss that out there as to what the rest of the state and nation is doing. Okay, thank you. Any uh, questions for uh, Jen from my seatmates? Uh, I, I guess my only question for Jen would be, does she foresee any need to keep uh, this public hearing open if we um, have a decision? Yes, I, I think we should leave it open for written comment until um, the entire board is here in the room. Okay. So until the 13th or whenever we're doing the other one? The 13th, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, I would concur. We're, we have time. It's always good. You know, we're talking about, um, you know, allocating, uh, appropriating $59 million worth of expenditures. It would be nice to have the everybody's signature on the line. <laughs> yes. Oh, and one other thing, just a reminder that um, the county cannot, cannot overtax property tax. We can't no. increase it. 1% is, is right. given. Yes, that's I think, I that think that's, you know, as far as under clarifications, it would be that we, you know, we have property tax limitations in the state of Washington that were adopted probably at least a dozen years ago or longer. 2011, I believe. Yeah. And so the, uh, yeah, we cannot actually increase taxes more than 1% without asking the voters. And which, so, which is a sum of 55 rounding approximately $55,000 right. um, $55, is the maximum, which we do, you know, our budgets are generally built with the 1% increase that we are allowed uh, to take. But anything beyond that, the idea that we, um, you know, because we give everybody colas, which are generally have not actually even kept pace with inflation. Uh, we're actually going behind that we can somehow go out and raise taxes to cover that we can't without asking the voters if that is okay and to my knowledge we've never asked the voters if that was okay and so we don't we live within the revenue sources that we have and we've been able to do that um, by living within the, the we're only we're only getting one percent more property tax than we got last year uh, except sure. for new construction as well goes on there sure. I would I would also add that the county has never went to the taxpayers and asked for a rate hike for their for their budget or or appropriations. Um, I don't know that I would say it may never happen. No, um, unless you know because you may see something go to the taxpayers um, on if they want a dog shelter or if they want childcare or if they want five million dollars going to the White Salmon School. Uh, because I don't know that I will be making that choice. Um, I will be leaving that to the voters for, for them to be making that choice. Um, but yes, I agree. Okay. I'm going to ask one last time for public testimony on the proposed 2023 budget. Everyone that has not already uh, provided public testimony. I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. Gilbert, you, you've, you've already provided testimony. Um, so I, I'm not going to acknowledge you. I do so politely and respectfully. <laughs> um, anyone in the room? Okay. If not, I think our, our plan is to uh, continue this hearing over until uh, December 13th, leaving the um, record open for public testimony, uh, written public testimony. Uh, until that time. So I would invite Ms. Gilbert to, if there's something that you wish, some additional um, uh, comments that you wish to make, that would be your the best opportunity. And so I guess with that, if my seatmate is amenable to that, then I would uh, entertain a motion to that effect. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I move that we continue the public hearing for the 2023 uh, budget until December 13th, leaving open uh, the option for written public comment and closing verbal public comment. 
Okay, I will step down and second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and I do want to thank the uh, commenters. Those were all really great things to hear about, too, and uh, done in a, in a good way. Okay, we're going to move on to unfinished business. Uh, this is um, a public hearing that was is closed to further public comment on the adoption of the Klickitat County six-year road transportation improvement programs for the year 2023 through 2028. And we've lost our, oh, okay, <laughs> our staff. No, no, we haven't adopted yet. So I did just announce the, the uh, six-year transportation program. Uh, if you want to provide a, a brief update and we typically do we do the the six year and then the annual yes okay six year is a six-year planning um, document like we've talked about uh, that difference between that and the annual is the annual is one year of the six year six year is a planning document is not a budgetary document right. the annual is the budgetary document so what's in the six year while it's planned it, nothing's approved past the first year. And the highlights are Courtney Road and uh, the grant project we have in Bickleton. Thank you. I will now open it up for questions or comments from my seatmates as this is closed to further public comment. Commissioner Christopher, any comments or questions? Okay. Yeah, I I haven't either. I think we've been we've been through it. Um, I guess with that, then I would um, I would look for a motion to adopt the um, county six year transportation improvement program for the twenty twenty three through twenty twenty eight as presented. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we approve and adopt the Kentucky County six year road transportation improvement program for the years twenty twenty three through twenty twenty eight as presented. Thank you. I will step down and second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, that brings us next to this is for the 2023 annual construction program. Uh, this is a public hearing that was um, continued but closed to further public comment. Bob, with a brief. Um, Overview, okay, quick brief overview. Again, it consists of Project Bickleton Highway widening, uh, which is a day labor project. At Courtney Road, which is the finishing of that project that's been ongoing, which is paving, Rock Creek Bridge Painter, um, East Road Paver, uh, West and West and East Market Street Paving, and Roosevelt Grade Paving, and then a bunch of safety projects. All of those projects, minus the Bickleton widening and a portion of the Courtney Road, are all federally funded. Thank you. That concludes your that concludes brief that. brief. Yes. Okay. I will now open it up for questions or comments from my seatmates, Commissioner Christopher. Um, I guess I would just say I very much appreciate that they're mostly federally funded. Uh, and I also very much appreciate that we're uh, we're going to be using as much county workforce as we can and, and to get the Bickleton project done. Um, so I think those are those are all good things mentioned in there, and I look forward to um, passing this motion and getting it started. Okay, I would concur. So I guess with that, I would I would be looking for that motion, sir. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adopt the 2023 annual road construction program. Okay, I will step down and second the motion. We have a motion and a second to adopt the 2023 annual construction program, road construction program. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. We are thank done you. with that. Great, thank you. That concludes all of our uh, public hearings and public meetings that we have scheduled for today. So I will move us along to the um, consent agenda. 
Um, barring any questions from you, I would uh, make a motion to approve the consent agenda with all 16 items. Okay, I will step down and second that motion. We have a motion and a second to adopt the consent agenda with all 16 items. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Consent. Okay, payments. Do you have those, Mr. Commissioner? No, I do not have those, sir. Okay. Yeah, can we do that so you've actually got the numbers in front of you? Okay, actually that's fine. We're gonna take a five minute recess, uh, a comfort break as we call that. We'll be, uh, we'll be back in five minutes to uh, go on. Are we emailing me the document or something? Yes. Okay. We will wait for that, and now we will begin. Um, next would be we'll we'll be back to our payments and approvals. Hopefully, Commissioner Christopher, you received the. I I have not. I did have a system crash of all my county stuff. I've uh, reloaded email, but I'm not seeing anything coming through in my inbox, okay. uh, other than the papers that I was already able to print and bring with me. So I do not have those documents. I would have to uh, and would happily rely on your okay. um, your eyeballs. Okay. Um, yeah, I have I have reviewed them. I'll give you the numbers because I think it it's probably um, logistically it's hard for the even the acting chair to make a motion. <laughs> so yep. I'm not sure. Uh, so there are accounts payable warrants in the amount of eighty four thousand nine hundred and six dollars and fifteen cents and no payroll benefit warrants uh, for the date ending December 5th, 2022. So, so I would look for a motion to... Um, Mr. Chair, and I would move that we pay accounts payable warrants in the amount of $84,909.15 uh, with no uh, payroll benefit warrants for the date ending December 5th, 2022. Okay, and before I step down and second that motion, it's nine hundred and six dollars and fifteen cents. Wow. That's you, you spoke faster than my pen yeah. would do. All right. Sorry, eighty four thousand nine hundred and six dollars and fifteen cents. There you go. Perfect. I will step down and second that excellently worded uh, motion. Oh. Uh, <laughs> any discussion on paying the bills? No, sir. Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. I motion passes. Okay. Well, that gets us to the end of our agenda, unless we have board pending. If there's anything, uh, Commissioner Christopher feels compelled. No, I just want to make a uh, mention for anybody who's still watching. I see there's 30 people online, but I can't push the button to see who they are without potential collapse in my system. So I would say for if any of them are still on that participated in any of the public process uh, in the hearings today for comment, I appreciate your your comments. Uh, I am listening to your comments. And again, if you want to reach out and uh, discuss said comments, uh, my door is always open. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Christopher. Um, I would, I would, um, I would concur with that as well. Um, okay, with that, I guess uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn the regular meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adjourn the meeting. We have no workshops scheduled. Okay. I will step down and second the motion. Uh, we have a motion and a second to adjourn the regular meeting and no workshops scheduled later this week. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. We are adjourned. All right. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner yep. Christopher. For so we had a quorum. Uh, <laughs> and again, with the county stuff uh, failing, if for some reason you need me for something and I'm not responding immediately, 
go to my personal phone number and give me a call or something and I'm, I'm available. Okay. All right. Well, I'd say have fun, but don't have too much fun. Right. <laughs> All right.